I don't want you to get raped today, Jacoba. I, 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 I would prevent rape if I could. I just don't have the money that they are asking for. Lord, please. Lord, please. Please, 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 please. DT the boys, Alabama Prisoner Profiles. What's going on, man? Make sure y'all continue to like, subscribe, share the content, leave a comment, send the super thanks in the comment section. That's that little harp with the dollar sign in the middle of it. Make sure y'all continue to hit me up on all the other socials, TikTok, Facebook, email, Instagram. We doing all that, man. Say, man, Alabama has recorded 2,000 assaults for 2023 up until this point. About 1,600 prisoner on prisoner and 500 staff assaults for 2023. So just throwing them numbers out there to y'all. What else we got? Look, also, I changed the cash app to be the same as the PayPal. So now there's an extra S on the cash app. And that'll be Bama Prison Files with two S's. I corrected it in the title. So y'all check that out make sure y'all continue to hit up that paypal and the little cash app you feel me shout out to that boy pino y'all know pino is big youtuber commented on the last uh little video said he was gonna f with the channel shout out here i'm always shout out the bigger creators that show love you know what i'm saying last month of the year so i'm gonna try to go hard for y'all drop some fire content coming to y'all for the month of december now today got another combo with my boy j bird sb liam bro talk weekly that's the homie now so here we go well i just wanted to touch on a couple things that i hadn't heard anybody else touch on and it kind of surprises me um the one thing is it's the uh, the food um it's crazy how they do it in alabama uh like anything alabama grows they'll sell it like any, anything that D, ADOC grows, and don't don't get me wrong, I don't I don't have no records, and I don't know where they grow it at, but I know there are, that ADOC does grow. But what they do is they sell the fresh products and buy canned products for us. But the meat now, the meat is a whole different story. When I first got in the system in 1998, they had these boxes that said. Not it originally says not fit for human consumption. That's what it originally said on the box. Like I said, my my time from two uh, from 1998 to 2000 2005 was when I no 2006 is when I got out. What is but, that? Is but like, I, like test meat lab? Like no nah, man, it was I, I yet to this day, and I wish somebody could t enlighten me on what it was about. <clears throat> But on the boxes, it said, not fit for human consumption. That was what it was said in 1998. When I came back in in 2002, they had changed one word in that thing. People were talking about lawsuits over the years and nothing ever happened, but they changed one word in it. It went to not intended for human consumption. Mm. And, I mean, I don't understand. I mean, if... If that was their joke, if the feds was to step in and they say, "What are you feeding them?" What? What? I didn't mean to feed it, to feed them that. It's it's on the box right there. It's not intended to feed them, so I didn't mean to. It just got fed to them. I don't know. Yeah. It never. I, I never could understand what that was about. But they meant they changed one word that was on that box to not intended for human consumption to or not 
fit for human consumption to not intended for human consumption. Yeah, that reminds me of like uh like you know, like the U pass that fetish urines and shit and at the gas station it'll say on here like only intended for fetish use do not consume the mother. Right, right. Yeah, same kind. But yeah, and and I also just wanted to touch on Bullock, man. It was like uh that was uh I, I ended up I was being sent there because I have at at that time of my life I had owned two construction or two roofing companies. This is before I had my third one after I got out, but uh I I got You're sent there as an institution. The Do what? So you were successful on the street with the business. Yeah, yeah, I've always been a hustler, man. And it, and it's wore my body down. It's completely gone. <laughs> I mean, I can walk around and stuff, but if you take off running, I'm shit out of luck. I, <laughs> I can't chase nobody. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah anyway, uh, you maybe lose my train of thought, man. What was I saying? I'm trying to damn. This one dude I saw was complaining on the other video. When I, I mean, I'm sitting. I was sitting there with Pitbull, and Pitbull will fucking rant if you don't stop him. I'm like, it's an interview, dude. Yeah. Ask questions and shit. Yeah, I'll start a story, man, and 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 I'll I'll branch off if I'm not careful. I'll branch off into three or four more, you know, because of trivial trivial shit. But I was talking about Bullock. Yeah. Now this was this was uh, the thing. This is a mental health camp. I got sent there because I had institutional need because of my construction skills. Well, I get there and then I get there like I told you that uh, I had a I had a outstanding warrant. I had a hole, so uh, I couldn't work outside the fence. That's where they were they were building a new mental health ward outside the fence. So I couldn't work out there. So I just stuck there with no job. <laughs> but uh, anyway. So basically, these guys every morning around four fifteen to uh, six in the morning, there was a pill call, and these guys were getting everything for Thorazine, the you name it, all kinds of psycho, you know, psycho drugs, you know. Pill call four in the morning. Yeah, they 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 have to because they had so many on on the pill call. See, cell one through fifteen was uh mental health, and man, they had a heck of a time trying to keep up with all them crazy folks and us too, man. It's just, but back then, I, I you know there was a shortage of guards, but they had the minimum. You know they 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 had the, the minimum requirements there at Bullock at all times. You know it wasn't there wasn't no shortage like they're having now where people ain't even showing up. You know. But uh, these guys would go to this pill call line, and uh, like I said, they they'd have to they'd have to serve half the penitentiary. And then uh, I think it was seven or eight o'clock. I can't remember seven or eight o'clock. They did a mandatory yard call. And they sent everybody out in the yard. Now it could have been raining all day the day before, and mud could be on the ground. And where we was at, it was like a swamp area. Literally a swamp area. Bullock County is a swamp, even or the area that we were at. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So they send these guys, and these guys were like they—they they look like zombies. They come out the doors, you know. They're they're they, they're doing the uh, Thorazine <laughs> shuffle, <laughs> and then they having friends help them, you know, because you, then you got guys that's working from in the in the population part. They're down there working, helping these. People just get around, you know. Hang on. So, how can you get to the? Uh, how do you get designated the book? Like, what type of mental health thing do you have to have going on? Like, uh, you could. I mean, it, it it could associate with the crime that you had done. You know, you could have been a psycho killer. There was quite a few of them in there. I've done time with a lot of killers. Mm. But, uh, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I'm, and it might sound crazy. The, the best dudes that I, I hung out with in prison were stone cold killers because they what they said they meant you never had to second guess them. Straight up, um, <laughs> and, and know they had my back too. You know, but like I said, these guys would come out on this mandatory yard call, and they would flat lay out on the ground. Like I said, there'd be mud on the ground, and there'd be a dude standing at the door with uh, a broom knocking people off as they come in the door because you just got a clean cell. That's the reason why I do the mandatory yard call, call is to clean the cells. But what I just thought that was... Oh, what do you mean knocking people off with the broom? <laughs> knocking mud off of them where they laying out in the yard. 
Oh, so they laying down the yard on some yeah. dinner. It just, just yeah. Crazy. They didn't have nowhere to go other than a, than a, a, a soggy ass ground. You know, that's that's they pretty much. Florida. Over where the white pile was, it was sandy. It was a sandy area over by the white pile, but the rest of the yard was pretty much a soggy ground. And it was just you had like two picnic tables for a population of like twelve hundred. I think at the time it was twelve hundred. I don't remember. Hmm. Yeah, but it was just. And, and, and to be honest with you, I've never seen anything like. I would, this is what I did see. This is a direct result of a, a direct result of, of people not doing their job in prison. This guy got reclassed to move in population dorm, and I knew from day one he wasn't supposed to be in there. I was like, "Is this guy supposed to be in here?" And they said, "Yeah, he just got reclassed." So, you know, well, he's sitting in the back of the dorm, and I'm, and I, I was pretty observant in prison. I'm not real observant out here. But in, in prison, and, and it's good to know I can let my guard down out here. But in there, boy, I was, I, I was, <laughs> I was something, I was something to see, you know. But anyway, you what? You had to be. Yeah, you had to be. Yeah. And I've seen so many things. I've seen there's so many different scenarios that can go wrong. So many variables, you know. But anyway, long story short, is uh this guy. He's at the back of the dorm. He just got moved in there for two, three days. I'm kept. I keep noticing he's sitting on his rack and he's looking in my direction, and I'm thinking he's looking at me. And I'm like, I get up on my rack and I'm sitting. I, I stare back at him, and I finally just raise my hands up like, "What's up?" And he just turned his head away, and and that's all I got from him. The black dude, white dude, it's a white dude. Well, the dude that was next to me, he was he ran a store. He slept up above me. Now, what I'm about to tell you, let me go on and, and let you know, in the beginning, this is what was told to me after this happened, that the, that the crazy guy believed that the store man that slept above me had stole his items because they looked exactly like his. Because everybody's items looked exactly. We buy from the same store. You know, that's how crazy the guy was. But that's... This is what happened. I'm, I finally end up laying on my rack. And then I, I finally just gave up on The guy stared at me the whole time. I think he stared at me. Well, I finally go to sleep and I wake up to, dude is crawling up on the top rag. And he goes to try to stab, which well, actually he did. He goes, I, I'm, the, the rack is moving and I'm tripping out, man. And I get out from under it. And, and then all of a sudden, Roy, the guy that runs the store, he comes off the rack, boy, and I'm telling you, he's turning like a drive shaft. The, the store the store guy didn't know nothing, man. The store guy was my friend, Roy. The store guy had no idea what to get. The guy was tripping on. This is the, the, the story that I just told you a minute ago, that this is what happened in the end, is he said that he, that he seen the items in his box, and he recognized them as his, being his items. And this is the reason why he did what I'm about to tell you, <laughs> is he crawled up on the rack, and I had to get out from under it. I backed away. Roy comes off. Roy's turning, and, and Roy knocked him off the rack. And he's coming, and, and I'm telling you, boy, Roy's turning it on. I'm like, get him, Roy, get him. And I didn't notice that he had a knife. And the whole time, like, he was on top of the rack, and he was making all that movement, and that, my rack was shaking when I come up from under it. He, he snuck all the way. He snuck all the way over there. He snuck up on the rack, crawled up on the end of the rack, and jumped on the man while he was asleep in bed. All right, and then dude got him off, got the best of him. Dude got him off, got the best of him. I'm thinking Roy's good, and then all of a sudden, but Roy took his shirt off, and there was a light. You know, they have night lights in prison. It was a light directly above him, and as soon as he took his shirt off, blood started pouring from all different directions. He was cut eight, nine, ten times. It was terrible. It was slid across his throat, across his shoulders, um, stabbing in his side. When the police finally come in, the dude had told him, he come in, he said, did you just do that? He said, yeah. He said, put the knife away and come here. And the guy walked up to me, turned around, and, and cuffed him up. Well, the officer, the officer was there that night, told us he died. We was feeling oh. bad, man. We we already in prison. This is how, this is how cruel guards can be in prison now. Is is they told us Roy died, and we're all mourning Roy. We even have a little party, like a little wake for Roy. You know, we buy zoom zoom and wham wham. We eat, and you know, 
dedicated to Roy. And then, and because the officer said he died. Two weeks later, Roy comes in. He's all bandaged up. He's still alive. I was like, that son of a bitch. <laughs> man. Son of a bitch. I mean, that's cruel, man, to tell somebody that the man died. So what happened to the crazy dude to do the? He was he stabbed yeah. while he was doing stabbing. What like? But he he just crawled up on a rack while Roy was asleep and he just started cutting him, man. That's when the rack started shaking. I didn't even notice. The rack started shaking and I was like, What's going on? They get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> and I was gonna come out from under the rack and I looked and that's when I seen Roy was turning, boy. Roy was hitting him in the face and and I was I was really uh, impressed with Roy's form. He looked like a real boxer, you know, and I was tripping out like Roy can Roy can fight, you know. And thought at the end, I thought Roy dusted that ass for him, and then all of a sudden, like I said, he took his shirt off, and the blood just started pouring out from everywhere. What did he cut him with? Some kind. It was a toothbrush with a, a state razor uh, melted into it. Yeah. Easily, easily, easily obtained and easily made. But that was Bullock, like I said, and there was you know there was a guy there named Choker. The choker, uh, his thing was when he didn't get his way, he would choke himself completely out. He would fall out the floor. But he he was a murderer, and also he had some sex crimes on him too. Mm. And that's the thing, man. You know, you talk about California prison system. Uh, talking about you know, pretty much evacuate all child molesters. It was impossible at Bullock because half that prison you didn't know. Hell, half of them couldn't even talk. And they couldn't provide paperwork. They're not out there associating with the population anyway. But mm. um, that's mostly what them guys were in there for. Them guys at Bullock that were in the and down at that. And then you had the guys in the faith dorm, which we we looked at it as a catch out dorm. Uh, don't get me wrong, but man, hey, and I'm a firm believer in Jesus Christ. Um, he saved my life. But I'm just saying, at that point in my life. Uh, uh, I noticed there was a pattern. There was a lot of sex offenders that went to that dorm, you know, and for protection, you know, uh-huh. for the, for the safe haven. I mean, I got a bunch of war stories like that, bro. But, man, I feel like, you know, and, and, you know, what you do is your business. I just really don't feel like I'm making any kind of impact. I feel like I need to report on some of the things that I saw, like telling you about the, you know, what I've seen at Bullock and, you know, the guy I could stab him. I mean, that's the direct result of people not doing their job correctly, you know, that there's no way, because when that man put in the, was put in the dorm, I realized that from the very first day, I said, that guy is not, he, something ain't right about him. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, what's up with that guy? And they told me, said, well, you know, he just got reclassed, he got put in with population. And just just me, I mean, if I, if I, if I checked it out first day, first day, if I seen him the first day and recognized it right off the bat, how in the hell couldn't I, a mental health professional reclass him like that and put him in with population. I don't know. That's just the way I saw it. So he should have been with the mental health folks, clearly. Yeah. And I mean, I've had, look, I had one dude come step up on me, man. This blew my mind. I'm in the shower, butt naked. And I'm going to tell you something, Bullock, if you got, if you got any kind of uh, hang-ups about your body and you don't want to seem to be butt naked, uh, you can't tell. I was in the shower every night, but it was like one night I was up in there, and this big black dude come and tapped me on the shoulder. Now there's all kinds of showers to my left and to my right. He said he wanted that shower, and I was like, "No, man, you're not gonna get this shower." Well, there was three or four other guys that were black dudes that was taking a shower, and they ended up having to grab him. He wasn't even supposed to be in that cell. He's supposed to be in the mental health dorm. And he's down there in, in my end trying to start trouble. That's the kind of thing you see all the time there, every day. And if you ain't careful, it didn't, like in that situation, it didn't lead to anything, but a lot of times it did. That's the thing about it. I never, I, I, it never ceased to amaze me. Um, some of the crazy stuff, it's, it's almost like you look forward to it. You look forward because of monotony. That's the thing that people really don't talk about too much, but not every day, the same thing every day. You look forward to violence, you know? Dude, you're right. when I was watching, when I be looking at a lot of these footage and shit, I be looking, it's like a lot of motherfuckers be like, 
just sitting around, staring off into the distance, like laying on the rack. I'm like, damn, that shit really do be. I'm thinking in my head, like, this shit really do be boring as hell in there, probably. Like, so when shit go down, motherfuckers is looking and shit. You know, you're supposed to mind your business or whatever. The fuck yeah. Is. And then you got the guys that are like me. I'm not real. I, now, if I'm comfortable around, I'm around quite a few people. I'm good, you know. I, I'm I'm comfortable, but like I don't I don't kick it with too many people. If I'm by, I don't know anybody, you know. I just ain't one to get out and be sociable. I'm not that type of person. But when I first came down, it was like I remember Draper and, and Two Cell up. It was '98. I'm gonna say. 98 beds up, 98 beds down. And they sent me up there, man. And look, I had, they had, they didn't have no uh, beds open in population, right? So they stuck me in the faith, not the faith dorm, but the honor dorm for people who hadn't had any disciplinaries and good guys. And most of them had a lot of time. I noticed that a lot of them, you know, had 20 life, life sentences and, Met a few of my homeboys, you know, and all, and I'm, I'm chill. I'm really liking it. I'm like, boy, prison ain't bad at all, you know. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm not far from a, uh, the TV. I'm watching the Alabama game, yeah. and I'm like, man, this is all right here, you know. And uh, it's about. I was in there for about four days, and all of a sudden, an officer came and tapped, tapped on my rag. Yeah. He said, sir, you, uh, you've been sent to population. We got your bed open down there in two cell up. Damn. I was like, okay. Well, just as soon as that said, the officer said, ain't no big hurry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here for a minute. Well, about that time, my homeboy was coming up to me. Hey, man, you're going to need this. You're going to two cell. And they handed me this little thing called a crime stopper. You put it on your box, and it keeps the lock from being knocked off so easy. You can still knock the lock off or whatever, but it helps, you know. They give me that, and then this other dude comes up to me and gives me a piece of iron. I'm not talking about a knife. I'm talking about something you put in your hand. If you hit somebody, you probably knock a hole in their head, you know? He said, like you might need a, this. Like a rock thing? <laughs> yeah, well, it was like, I want to say it was some kind of fancy metal, and I don't know where he got it from, you know? I don't know what it was, but it was just like a, it was the size of a roll of nickels. And that's what it looked like was nickel. That's exactly what it looked like was nickel, but it was a rock thing. He hands it to me. He said, "You might need this. Hello. Don't take." And they're telling me not to take no. Don't take no shit. And I'm like, "Oh Lord, here I go." And, you know. I, now, granted, I ain't no little bitty dude, and I, I can hold my own. I, I ain't gonna say I'm the baddest dude around, but I can fight. You know, I've been fighting since I was a kid. You know, so I'm gearing up for this, and I don't know what I'm fixing to see. Well, I'm on my way. Guards taking me down, and I got my mattress. And, and I'm, as I'm going down in that direction, the guard is walking with me. He just turns around and says, go on in there and tell the officer you uh, you in bed two, I want to say it was two, two forty. It was in the two, maybe they was holding 150 down and 150 up because it was two, it was 240 something is, was my bed. It was right next to the sport TV. Mm. Um, but as I was walking in, I look in two cell. And one cell right directly across from two cell, I see all these dudes sitting on top racks. It's like four deep on top and four deep on bottom. It was three racks wide. You had a middle lane, or excuse me, you had two outside lanes. You had beds up against the wall, and then you had a middle lane, and then you had a bed up against the wall. I seen everybody was sitting on the racks, man. And then as closer I got, I could tell they was jacking their man. I was like, yeah, man, and I'm walking in this, and I look to my left, and there is a, uh, I want to say she was Asian. Um, she was definitely uh, of Oriental descent. She was working on the opposite side in one cell. She was standing there with her back, and all the, I, I, and I'm not exaggerating, 30, 40 guys standing there in, in the very front of that cell um, masturbating. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was like, Lord have mercy. I was like, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. And then <clears throat> that blew my mind. But then after I've been there for a while, I started noticing these guys running around in pink suits. Now, I don't, I don't think they do it no more. 
these guys had pink suits on. I'm like, what's the pink suit thing about? Dude says, well, you know, you see these guys over here masturbating? Yeah. Well, if they get caught, they put them in a pink suit and they write home to their parents. And this, they really did this. ADLC did this. They give them a pink suit and they write home to the parents they were participating in homosexual activities. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and you know, it still didn't stop them. And, and, and hey, the crazy thing was, there was some there that was like, shit, I got my green light, man. What he was saying is he done already got a pink suit. You know? <laughs> He was good to go. You can't do no worse than the pink suit. I'm already here. You can't do anything. You you know, they can put you in lock up. What do they call these uh, t- type of prisoners that do this type of thing? Well, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a direct, uh, it's your right, breaking rule 38. And I don't know if they planned it like that. It was funny because they call it gunning. You know, mm-hmm. public masturbation prison is called gunning. Well, it just so happens. The rule number for um, public masturbation is rule number 38. I don't know if that was by design or whatever, but yeah, 38. Like the gun, the revolver. Exactly. So yeah. I think the inmate term for a prisoner that participates in this type of shit. Oh, that's creep. That's what I call them. <laughs> Little creepy ass. I've seen all kind of creepy stuff, man. Be walking up the steps, man, and there'd be a guard at the bottom. And you turn up just to go to your rack, going up the steps, and you you turn, and there's five guys at the top, you know, masturbating. And, you know, you just turn around and walk all the way to the other side of the dorm and go up the other side of the steps just to keep them being around the crowd. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, this is Draper, 98, 99. The average age there was like 20, I want to believe. Mm-hmm. 20 years old. Might have been, it might have been 19. I remember when I left, the population there was uh, like right around 1,200. But I, well, I understand they closed Draper, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And there y'all have it, man. Jaybird SB Part 4. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section. DC The Voice, Alabama Prisoner Profiles, out the game.